Visiting new destinations is one of the best parts of cruising, but there are some things that cruisers should never do when in cruise ports of call. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Well, we recently heard in the news of really some terrible tragedies that have happened in some of the cruise ports of call to cruise passengers. Now, not to be overly dramatic, but there are actually some things that you don't wanna do. They would be big mistakes to make in cruise ports of call. Now, what I did is I asked the Lifewell Cruise Facebook community for some of the things that they may have done or seen in cruise ports of call that cruisers should never do. Now, as always, the comments and responses were awesome, and there were some things that I hadn't even thought of. Now, by the way, there was one answer that was almost unanimous that people thought was the biggest thing not to do in a cruise port of call. Now, there were two answers that generated a lot of debate and even a lot of controversy. So I am gonna share those with you as well. I'd love to know your opinion. I'll save those for towards the end of the video. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, don't rent mopeds, Jeeps, or ATVs. Now, while you can go on an excursion that's organized, it really is a bad idea in most cruise ports of call to rent mopeds and scooters, and yes, even Jeeps. Not only can you get potentially into an accident, but there are actually some scams that happen in some different cruise ports of call, and you don't wanna get caught up in that. Now, when it comes to getting into an accident in some of the Caribbean islands or even in Bermuda, this does happen to people. And sadly, some people have ended up in the hospital. This is not something that you want to happen when you're supposed to be having a fun day in a cruise port of call. Number two, on a lighter note, don't forget to bring your sunscreen and even your sunglasses, in particular, obviously, if it's very sunny and hot outside. Now, while it might not sound like the end of the world, if you spend the rest of your cruise with a really bad sunburn, it can actually ruin your cruise. By the way, for many cruise ports, it's obligatory to have reef safe sunscreen. So in particular, if you're going to Mexico, if you're going to the US Virgin Islands, or if you're going to Hawaii, you will want to bring that. If you're wondering what sunscreens are reef safe or reef friendly, I will leave some from Amazon linked down in the description below the video. Don't forget to stay on the ship's time. Now this has honestly caused a lot of cruisers problems. Sometimes the ship's time is different than the island time. So something that you want to make sure is that you do have maybe a simple watch that you bring with you that you can just keep on ship's time. Alternatively, if you do have your iPhone, just make sure that you set it manually and you don't let it automatically update to the island time. Now, of course, you also wanna make sure that you have noted the all aboard time. As you do get off the ship at the gangway, usually you will have a sign that is posted either inside of the cruise ship or right outside at the security area. Don't book two excursions on the same day in the cruise port. Now, if you are overly ambitious, that might be something that you decide to do. Do a morning excursion and then do an afternoon excursion. But what some people said is they tried that and not only were they exhausted, but in some cases they actually missed their second excursion because sometimes it can happen that the first excursion is back a little bit late. Don't forget your shore excursion tickets in your cabin. It is no fun to get off the cruise ship, to walk down the pier only to find out that you need to go back to your cabin and really hurry up to get back as well, but to go back to your cabin to pick up those excursion tickets. Speaking of forgetting things, don't leave the cruise ship with only your cruise card. This can be a problem when you do end up eating lunch, for instance, going to a bar, for instance, and end up realizing that you left your credit card and your cash on the ship and then you have to pay. Don't forget to pick up your tender ticket. Now, this only applies if you are tendering rather than actually walking off the cruise ship at a port. Tendering does take a little bit longer and you do need to pick up tender tickets. And honestly, the process can take even about an hour, sometimes a little bit more from the time that you pick up your ticket till you get to shore. So you'll wanna plan a little extra time for that. Now, something else to remember is when you do get back to your cruise ship, you wanna leave a little extra time to catch that tender back as well. Don't flash money. 
or jewelry in the cruise ports. And that includes even when you're in a cab. So do be careful. Don't keep wads of money in your wallet. If you do have money with you, try to keep it maybe even in two different locations. And when it comes to your jewelry, ladies in particular, keep that jewelry in the safe on the cruise ship and try to avoid wearing anything super expensive in the ports. Don't forget your ship's name and the pier. You'd think that this couldn't happen, but this does actually happen. And oftentimes there are two, three, four, even five piers in certain cruise ports of call. Don't rely on your taxi driver to know where your ship is. Make sure when you get off the ship that obviously you remember your ship's name, but also that you do take note of your pier. Okay, now for a controversial one. Don't forget to take your government ID off the cruise ship. Now, this is where the debate came in. Some people thought you should really take your passport off the cruise ship. After all, what happens if you get into an accident or if you need your passport for whatever reason that you wouldn't have it with you and that could be a problem. But other people said, yes, bring your government ID like a driver's license, for instance, but leave your passport in the safe on the cruise ship. Now, as I mentioned, there was a lot of debate about this topic, but I will tell you what I do. At least over the last few years, I leave my passport in my cabin safe. But what I do is I take photos of the passport. So my entire family, I have the photos. And then what I do is I actually email it to myself as well. Now, my understanding is that a crew member would go into your cabin if you didn't make it back to the ship on time and they would leave the passports with the port agent or the port authority. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that is the case. So if you know, please do let me know down in the comments below and please let me know as well, what do you do? Should we take our passports off the ship or should we leave them on? Now, this next one really did surprise me. And again, there was a lot of debate, a lot of controversy over this one. And it is about staying on the cruise ship. So some people said the worst mistake cruisers can make is staying on the cruise ship while the cruise ship is in port. But other people felt that, you know what, this is a great day to get spa specials, to relax, to have a time where many people are off of the cruise ship. And in particular, that if there's a cruise port that they've been before or for whatever reason, just didn't find that interesting, that staying on the cruise ship was a good idea. But other people felt that when you're on a cruise, one of the biggest benefits is seeing new places, meeting local people, trying the food, and really that it was the worst thing to stay on the cruise ship and not get off in the cruise port. So I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know what you think. And the number one thing that cruisers said to never ever do in a cruise port of call is be late. So you guessed it, don't be a peer runner and don't miss the cruise ship. Now I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know what are some things that you might have done that you shouldn't have in cruise ports of call or what are some things that you think other cruisers should not do in cruise ports of call. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.